Hi guys, today I want to introduce you to the Art Toolkit Folio Palette. So this is an extremely lightweight palette that's designed for taking, traveling and uh, painting plein air. So outside or on location. And this is, and so Art Toolkit makes several sizes of this. And this one is designed in collaboration with Traveler's Company. So in the month of March, I wanted to work on these four palettes and do one every week. But I'm having a hard time getting all the videos done. So I think we might do these kind of sprinkled throughout spring. And so, and then we'll kind of introduce a palette and then maybe use it in a shorter video the next week or something. So today we're going to look at this uh, uh, art toolkit and uh, collab with the Travelers Company. I also am showing you a little haul here from Greenleaf and Blueberry. So it's their Vivianite, which is an absolutely beautiful color. It's it's a blue ochre, so it's got a, it's a granulating blue. Um, it's kind of like a granulating version of indigo, just a really beautiful color. And then some of the Travelers Company leather tags were there as well. So, but this is the actual uh, palette. So you can see it's this beautiful kind of golden brass color. And it has a really nice logo, but you can see here like how thin it is. So... It's about the same size as the pink one next to it, which I've been using and absolutely loving for um, painting plein air. I didn't really have any um, uh, plans to change that up. But then when I have been taking it outside with my dog, it's a little bit heavy. Um, it's not easy to hold. And you can see here like this, this little one, I can hold it on kind of hold that and the book together. And it doesn't move whereas this one here um, you kind of hold it and then it, it will kind of just move around so yeah so this is how the palette comes set up You've got the three square pans, the six uh, kind of half pans or are they um, quarter pans and then like the how many are there 12 eighth pans and then the two larger mixing spaces which I actually really have enjoyed having. So my first concern was these tiny little pans. Can I fit my brushes in there? So um I was I was thinking that I'd prefer probably the square ones or the rectangular ones so that I can I, I've actually put quite a few colors in the one um, square pan or rectangle pan and I would even use those larger mixing ones just to put colors in so I thought about getting three more like square pans on the left there to pop in there but I worked around and kind of thought about it and I thought that the smaller um, square pans might be really good for putting staining colors, but I wanted to just check my brushes. So this is my regular brush and you can see it would be easy to get th that brush in, but these are the two that I use for, um, so you can see how much bigger they are for actually taking on location. And so, yeah, I just wanted to check that they would kind of go into these square pans, the little ones. So once I decided that was all okay, I got out my wooden uh, box full of colors to choose some colors to go in there. So this is a collection that took about five or six years uh, to collect. And so I pulled out all my favorite ones, ones that I know I really love to mix with each other. Um, if you've been on the channel for a while, you know that some of these colors will be really familiar and there'll be a couple in there that I thought maybe would be nice to throw in and uh, try those out and see so
so once I put the colors in there I left the palette overnight to dry and so we'll come back in another video I have like a 10 minute video uh, just swatching out the colors so that you can see that but I thought this was kind of a, an important process to show you that every palette is unique so if you know to to get a palette to suit your needs um, you can try all kinds of different variations and yeah so what we're going to do is we're going to use the palette and I'm just showing you it's we're going to use this Archer's uh, cotton sketchbook so I've been really enjoying this I have one that's pretty much ready for a flip through and we'll finish a few things on the channel but then this is kind of um, one that I've been doing a little personal uh, project in and this is kind of little five minute painting so I haven't had a lot of time um, in the new year to kind of paint but we have kind of these mountains across the way and I will show you what inspired me to do this in a minute but yeah I've just been um, taking literally five minutes sometimes maybe a little bit more or less and kind of just doing these color studies so mixing colors seeing how they work on the page and really just getting that creativity going the interesting thing about it is that i've used these two different brushes so and they're both da vinci but this one is more pointed and so it makes more angular uh, shapes whereas this one is a round brush and so you get these smoother shapes so even the brush you use can kind of contribute to um, how the painting comes out and so all of those things you're kind of thinking about and learning just even doing these quick sketches so I'm showing you this book this is kind of what inspired me to do this so this is one of Turner's sketchbooks and you can see that these are very quick loose impressions of where he was in the Swiss Alps so I do have a project going um, and we'll kind of we'll work on that a little bit later in the year so painting Mount Rigi but uh, yeah very very interesting um, to kind of see these sketches and then realize that it's something that we can all do like you can take a sketchbook and just dedicate it to maybe painting something in your garden for five minutes or looking out the window every evening and painting you know what you see so uh, yeah So I left this a few days and then I actually wanted to change a few things that's why I hadn't quite done the um, swatching everything yet because I did add some things I did change a couple of things so I pulled out a couple of colors with a palette knife and added some different things in like there's three greens in um, that rectangle there where there was only the one and then there's two in there um, I've got three in this big square palette so yeah you can see here like in even in the mixing palette I've put colors and I always try and put colors that I don't mind if they mix uh, so similar colors yeah uh, so then one morning uh, we were, I got up with Millie and it was like just the the light was had just cracked on the horizon and um, the moon was so beautiful it had like a yellow sort of glow around it um, and so I, I went back in to get my paints and probably at this time it was about 6 20 and uh, yeah we just have a little paint here and kind of try out the palette uh, see some of these mixes here so um, I'm really I, I again I picked colors that I know mix really well that I enjoy mixing this one here is indigo and uh, roasted French ochre and then I'll always add like a little bit of a purple in there maybe um, yeah either a sugalite or like a raw umber like a, a violet earth or something like that so I'll again I'll show you the colors in the next video 
Um, but yeah, it was a little bit, I mean, it was freezing and my hands were very cold this morning. Um, Millie was um, being quite good. It's been quite difficult. She does not like to, even if I just take 10 minutes, I mean, we walk for quite a while, but um, taking 10 minutes to paint is like a thing that really, you, you kind of have to teach her. So anyway, um, yeah, trying to film and watch her and paint was a little bit difficult but it was just a really nice kind of morning and I just wanted you to kind of see how again inspired by Turner's sketchbook there you can just um, you don't have to kind of have hours to paint you can just start painting start observing start mixing your colors and trying out different paint brushes and the light was changing so rapidly as well. It's a really good um, exercise in kind of synthesizing everything that you're seeing and just picking one thing and kind of really trying to focus on that thing. And, and um, this was very difficult for me in the beginning when I went out. It was so overwhelming and I really thought, okay, I need you know to sit here all day I need six hours to capture this and to um, do it justice and then I, I just I never had that amount of time so um, finding Turner's sketchbook there was just a really interesting um, thought process to go through that you can like I love those colors there on the palette but um, you know thinking about it like every profession has kind of drills they have to go through athletes do drills musicians have their scales um you know it's it's something that we do is is as artists is look at colors look at how they mix how they move on the page and watercolor itself is quite a difficult medium so um to even just take those moments to put it on the page see how it flows see how it dries um do you need more you know to add more pigment and things like that so it's very very helpful to do something like this so you can see here I'm I'm using that's um actually Holbein shell pink and Holbein lilac with a little bit of the Daniel Smith Sedona or roasted French ochre and also with the uh, Schmincke cobalt turquoise and the, I, I hadn't uh, actually, we were, we had finished painting and I wasn't going to do any more, but then the, this little cloud just really captured my attention. So I wanted to paint this as well. So at this point Millie's asking if she can't have my palette can she at least have the water bottle lid <laughs> and then I'm just getting her off the um, the high part there but yeah so it was quite an enjoyable morning and I just highly recommend it just taking a few moments this 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 is really for your personal growth as an artist and personal growth as like what just to figure out what colors um, you'd like to use what colors mix well together and how they perform on the paper and things like that so uh, yeah I feel like we've been either living in a snow globe or living in like it's been raining just pouring down rain all day so it's kind of one or the other at the minute but Millie has been loving it she loves the snow we've got our own personal Swiss Alps here <laughs> thanks to the uh, snowplow and yeah um 
she's grown a lot. So if you've been watching her um, since we got her at Christmas, she is really like getting her own personality. She loves to bring a toy outside. So every morning she picks a different toy and comes to the door with it or she will um, bring a different one in as well. So yeah. This is her absolute staring. She's seeing and hearing something that I can't hear. And then every time I look when she's looking like, you know, like that, there's always something or someone that she's looking at. So yeah. Hello, hello buddy. Yes, one, one moment. So the other thing that I wanted to um, show you is a little mini collection of paintings available. So once a year I like to try and make some originals available and um, I, yeah, I've done this kind of faded floral collection. So these are kind of Orbison inspired, um, just all the beautiful colors that I love, the kind of muted um, pinks and uh, kind of lilacs and yeah we have a couple of like the chairs we have a couple of shoes and yeah i hope you guys like them so these will be available either later tonight or monday uh, and there are a couple of larger paintings that i'll show you in a minute as well and possibly a couple of shoes that will be available maybe next wednesday or thursday i love making these i know quite a few of you enjoy collecting them and having something original so um, and, and as far as the watercolor um, update goes I'm not going to be able to do one in March I'll try for the end of April so um, yeah but the other thing is and you can see a little cloudscape there with the Orbison rose in the middle but um, I will show you a little sneak peek of the landscape class at the end as well. So that is coming up pretty soon. I There's about 20, you can see like this, the yellow sunshine. I loved it. So um, there, I love the colors. But um, yeah, there are about 22 maybe videos in the landscape class and I have seven left. So... I can only get through about three a week if that sometimes um, but it should be only a couple more weeks and um, I'll have that available and I'm going to put the price at 75% off for the first 24 hours just to say thank you for um, it's been so lovely getting to know you and for your wonderful comments and everything I've really appreciated it and so yeah I hope you guys will enjoy that too um just a few little treats you can see i kind of did the um color sort of color groupings and these will also match in with other um minis that you may have already collected so you can hang these in like a four by six or a five by seven frame to give them a little bit more status on like on the wall and yeah just a really lovely little collection there So you can see here are a couple of the larger paintings. So this first one, they're, they're from sort of my Climbing Mountain series and with the silk petals um, that are yeah tied on with the French knots. 
and um, the first painting is more inspired by a fjord and the second painting is more like the Rocky Mountains so yeah I think um, it's been really enjoyable I love making these and yeah I loved sending them out uh, last year so I wanted to make another couple available um, let's see all of the paintings that I do I, I mostly don't use um, like non light fast colors you can see that's the back but for the the first one I showed so not this one but the one that's on the desk the fjord one I did put a couple of the neon colors in at the end you can see in the sky there's a bit of peach pop and a bit of like my pink at the top there and they will fade over time and you'll still have the beautiful painting underneath but for now I think I always really enjoy just adding a little bit of that at the end just so that we can enjoy those beautiful colors at least for a while um, yeah so we also had a birthday and we were kind of practicing a little bit of kind of the Victorian style Lambeth piping so that was very exciting we weren't using kind of royal icing you have to use the raw eggs and things so we just used um, cream basically to pipe it doesn't pipe as cleanly uh, as like royal icing would but yeah it's just very fun and something that um, was really enjoyable this week so anyway let's have a little sneak peek of the landscape class that's coming up this was designed so that um, so that you can kind of think about landscape in a, a different way, maybe a non-traditional way, and also to show you all the techniques that you would need for landscape, for any kind of landscapes that you you know wanted to create. You can see like I've got these old world um, stone cartouches, kind of like inspired by old maps and um, we look at like solar flares and um, this is a beautiful kind of Versailles inspired uh, kind of a Rococo panel and it's got like a it's kind of like a window frame looking out into a pond with a fountain and so lots of really beautiful things exactly the kind of things you'd like to see from the channel um, but we'll also teach you a lot about um, just painting color we go into kind of what happens if your um, painting isn't going the way that you want it and um, just how to think about kind of layering colors and um, all kinds of lovely things so I also hope you enjoy this and yeah um, how have you guys been going I hope the new year is treating you well is there any like special requests that you have for the channel I will be doing a mixing one coming up maybe like at the end of each um, we'll kind of do a winter spring summer and autumn one and um, of favorite mixes and yeah so um, I will see you guys in the next video bye